you know, the question is, would you buy into would you buy into tech land at a time when we think the Fed is going to be raising interest rates after what seems like I don't know if it was a head fake, but the market seems to at least shifted its view of what's really happening here. Yeah, you have to kind of take a zoom out view a little bit on what's going on. No pun intended with the uh, tough result for Zoom the other day. But, you know, the, the demand for tech is going to continue to gain momentum. The way companies are looking at the seculars, the way we're looking at how cloud is going to transform, more, transform businesses, the way we're looking at how AI, for instance, is going to drive companies forward in the ability to use data. In the zoom out look, we're going to see growth in these areas. Of course, the multiple compression, everybody kind of wants to time the market and get in at the exact right time. Having said that, the demand is only going to continue to grow and companies are going to make bigger investments in things like AI, automation and cloud in order to actually streamline their businesses, especially with some of these hiring freezes and other challenges that are going on in the economy, Andrew. So it sounds like your view is uh, Fed be damned. It doesn't really matter. If you're a long-term player, this is where you want to be, even at these valuations? Well, the valuations are, are far, far down from where they were, but of course, they could still be seen as high. Company today that is reporting is NVIDIA. Of course, we know it's down almost 50% from its highs, but it's still trading at a fairly high multiple. People look at a, at a stock like that and say, is this where we get in? Of course, when it was at nearly 340 and it was roaring forward, people thought the gaming boom would never end. We're seeing that, you know, that particular trend slow down. We're seeing normalization in the market in certain areas. But we also know we're in the early, early innings for AI, maybe 20, 25 percent of the way in for where we could be in terms of long term demand. And NVIDIA, for instance, is a company you look at and say they are the leader in AI. And that is unlikely going to change anytime soon. So that's a for instance. Or you look at a Qualcomm. That's another name that we've looked at. And that name constantly comes under pressure, even when it's delivering. And it's still sitting at around a, a 10 to 12 forward multiple, depending on the day. Um, and this is a company that has leadership in an area like 5G, which the demand for handsets, a right. mobile. Why the way you, we by the way, on Qualcomm, on Qualcomm specifically, why do you think that is? I've actually always looked at that on a multiple basis and thought, you know, what do you think that should be trading at? 15, 16, 17, 18 times? And, wh and why do you think it doesn't get that credit then? Yeah, you know, Qualcomm is kind of a love to be hated name at times. I think some of the long term regulatory issues it's faced with, uh, you know, pretty much every regulator around the world, the battle it's in faced with Apple. Uh, you know, I think all those things weighed on the company in some ways. But if you look at how important it is uh, from a national security level, you look at you know the role that its chips play in everything, uh, pretty much every premium smartphone device, uh, even Apple can't get away from Qualcomm. I do. I think it's underpriced. And I think the company's diversification under CEO Chris, Cristiano Oman has actually taken it in some new areas like IoT, and it's had a huge number of wins in automotive, where you have to look at that price and say, it's pretty attractive here. You like Alphabet, and there's some people who look at Alphabet and think that that is going to be very exposed to the advertising market, which is going to be the first to go if, in fact, you think we're heading into a recession. What do you think? Well, I kind of call it the above the fold play. You are absolutely right that there is going to be some risks for advertising. We've seen it for Meta. Of course, when Snap's numbers came out at the uh, you know, at the beginning of the earnings wave, everybody thought the advertising industry was doomed. And then Alphabet largely came in close to the expectation. Of course, there were some near misses, but Alphabet's business seems to be far more resilient. And when a company is going to decide which part of their advertising they're going to steer away from and what part they're going to continue to invest in, the numbers showed pretty clearly that Alphabet is going to be that above the fold advertising partner. And that business is going to be really resilient. 